Dragon Ball Fighters 2, what is that? What could possibly justify a sequel for one of the best fighting games of all time? New stages? I mean, that might as well be DLC. Better netcode? <laughs> That's just them fixing the game. No way they should charge for that. I mean, they, they could, they probably would, but they shouldn't charge just for fixing the game. So what exactly would it take to justify a Dragon Ball Fighter sequel? Well, I've compiled a list of things that could happen and things that actually should happen. And I'm pretty sure not all of these changes will happen, but if they want to release a new Dragon Ball Fighters, it needs to have a lot of new stuff. And you need to learn something new from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Nathaniel Drew has been a great teacher, helping me discover my online voice so I can better convey my thoughts and ideas and put them into these videos. If you're looking to make a YouTube channel like me, there's some great advice on video editing, thumbnail design, and so many more topics that you actually need. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and just follow wherever creativity takes you and it's less than ten dollars a month with an annual subscription but the first thousand people to click the link down below will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can fully explore your creativity make sure to join link down below check out the classes they're offering and learn something new for free with that free trial thank you skillshare for sponsoring this video and before dragon ball fighters 2 i firmly believe we will see a season 4 of dlc maybe even a season 5 but i think it's safe to assume that dragon ball fighters 2 will happen at some point. And it's most likely already under development. So let's go through a few things that might justify a sequel and let's start with the simple things. Well, the simple things to explain, not necessarily the simple things to execute. First up, a better netcode. This is the number one thing on a lot of people's lists. We want more consistent online matches. And Dragon Ball's netcode is just not up to par. This game is too good to struggle so much online. Fortunately, Arc System Works is delving into the world of rollback. We won't have to wait long to see if they're capable of pulling it off when Guilty Gear Strive releases this April. Arc Arxis is really good at releasing really solid fighting games with terrible netcode. It's been happening for years. Fingers crossed that they have it figured out for Guilty Gear Strive. And if they do, you can be optimistic about the future of fighters. Number two, crossplay. Perhaps more of a commodity than a necessity, crossplay is quickly becoming an industry standard. That said, a lot of games are still not doing crossplay between console and PC. It's just built too different, I guess. But it would certainly help a lot of communities on the console side of things, especially people on Xbox. If crossplay were to happen, you would actually have a choice of where to buy this game instead of being forced to go to PS4 because of the player base or the PC because it also has a decent player base and the best players are all there. Number three, cosmetics. Cosmetics in the form of new stages, new skins or both. Fighters only gave us one new stage after its release and it wasn't an iconic place like the Kame House, Snake Way, Hyperbolic Time Chamber. It was a place we kind of never saw before, which was definitely odd. Since this stage came out relatively early in the Dragon Ball Fighters life cycle, we assumed there would be more, but it just never happened. Happened. And a lot of these iconic locations are still very much requested by the community. I don't know if the game just isn't built that way, if it's really hard to make a new stage, but modders have been doing amazing work creating beautiful places in fighters. They're not as polished as the official stages, but still, they're pretty damn close. Maybe when building a new fighters, you keep in mind that you will want to add new stages in the future. And also character skins. Almost every fighting game out there lets you buy skins for your favorite characters. Not only is this something that makes fans happy, it's a major source of revenue for the developer. As skins are usually simple cosmetics that don't affect gameplay too much. So fighters won't just have to rely on game sales and DLC to sustain itself long term, it would have another completely optional source of revenue. And honestly, I'd be super excited to check out skins once in a while as they update the game over time. Once again, modders have done a great job with a lot of fan favorite skins, as well as some others that are just completely ridiculous. But in this case, I wouldn't say the job is as simple as modding. Modded skins usually look good from a distance, but if you just play at a slightly higher resolution or zoom in with cheat engine, you can tell that the quality is just not the same. Not to mention that whenever you actually change the character model rather than just recolor it, there's always some move that will like clip an arm through a body or clothes that will clip through your head. So you really just can't look at these mods and say, well, the models are doing it. Why isn't the developer doing it? It's not that simple. Part of what makes this game so beautiful is that they almost hand animate everything. So skins are definitely not easy, but maybe you can build the game in a way that wouldn't be as hard as end drawing all those animations from scratch. I think the benefits would 
definitely be worth it. Now, we've talked about three different points so far, netcode, crossplay, and cosmetics. Now, even if they add all of these three things, I still don't think that's enough to justify a sequel. That would definitely be a nice addition, but all of them kind of feel like a patch. Whether they're delivered together or separate, I don't think it justifies a new game. However, if you have all of these things together with some of our next topics, then I can start to see a sequel forming. Number four, new story mode or single player experience. And by a new story mode, I definitely don't mean a new story utilizing the same systems they currently have in Fighters. There were some cool moments in that single player story, some interactions that we would have never gotten anywhere else. They were humorous, it was fun, but I also felt the story was a bit disjointed. At first, I thought we were looking at the same story from three different perspectives, then it straight up is a different story depending on the perspective you're playing from. I thought Android 21 started as an innocent scientist and then became a villain, but then they Majin Buu it up by having a good and evil personality split. It had potential, I don't think it's a good story though. But the absolute worst part of it is that it's way too many battles against the CPU with no interesting variation. They can power up the CPU to deal more damage, to regenerate health, but the gameplay doesn't change in a significant way to make this mode more fun to play in the long term. The idea was good, as you go through the different boards of story mode, the opponents you fight might change, it's randomized in a way, so if you want to play through the story multiple times you get a different experience, but just changing a couple of enemies in your path doesn't change the experience that much, and the whole thing is just plain boring to me. Arc System Works has already improved their story mode, Scramble Fantasy Versus I think has a terrific story mode honestly, and looking at other fighting games, obviously Netherrealm are the kings of fighting game stories, especially since Mortal Kombat 9. I definitely wouldn't mind the cinematic treatment with fighters graphics, but also they've always had good repeatable single player content with their towers, something that perhaps was best in Injustice 2 given how cool customizing your characters was in that game, the cosmetics were just top notch. You could make your characters look so freaking cool, and even get new moves for you to use in offline and casual modes. I don't think fighters should do towers, but if they can figure out a way of making repeatable single player content, perhaps even tied to the new skins that we just talked about, instead of unlocking them with coins, you'd have to actually beat certain challenges to get them. Then that new experience on its own might be enough to justify a sequel. It's one of the areas where fighters likes the most. If you don't care about online play, there's just not a lot to do. With that said, I don't think they would really release a new game with a new story mode or a new single player experience and not touch any of the game's systems. So let's go over the system changes that could justify a sequel. Most of the things that we wanted to see change were already changed with season 3. They even added multiple assists for each character which was perhaps their biggest change to their overall systems. So if a change that big can happen in a patch, what could possibly justify a sequel? Well I've got a few examples, they are not predictions or even wishes, but a group of changes that are perhaps too big to implement without having to start the game from scratch. First of all, stage transitions. Currently, some stages have transitions whenever you KO a character, so it's mostly an aesthetic change, but what if it was actually a gameplay mechanic? The new Guilty Gear will have stage transitions that can be triggered by certain combos, giving the player who triggered them a massive meter boost. Many Dragon Ball games in the past have had moves that would send the opponent flying through mountains for extra damage. Even Injustice had stage transitions mid-match for extra damage too, and that would be a very Dragon Ball thing to do for sure. Another Dragon Ball thing that was very missed when the game first came out were transformations, also known in fighting games as installs. The difference between a transformation and an install is simple, it's not just a visual difference. It's not just Goku going Super Saiyan 3 in a cutscene. That's just a visual transformation as he reverts back to normal once the cutscene is over. An install changes the character's behavior and sometimes even their moveset. Some examples are Golden Frieza, Adult Gohan and Super Broly. This game is based on the show that is all about transformations and power-ups. It is very surprising that we don't have this on more characters. And something tells me that it has a lot to do with how the base game was coded. The only real transformation we have is Golden Frieza, and that's a temporary power-up. And if you look at Frieza, it's basically a recolor of his skin. There are no physical changes to his body. Gohan gains a lot of tools, but his appearance doesn't change either. But what really made me think that there's something stopping them from doing transformations was Broly Super. He goes legendary Super Saiyan, they gave him a damage buff after he lands a level 3, but physically all the changes about the character is that it takes his shirt off. Letting you play as the legendary Super Saiyan would be tricky. Broly's body grows bigger, he gets super buff. That might implicate some changes to his hitbox, not to mention you'd probably have to reanimate his entire moveset with this new body to prevent things like clipping and hitbox weirdness. Even turning him Super Saiyan, you know, not the legendary, the yellow Super Saiyan, would probably be a lot of work since it's not a simple hair recolor, the hair actually changes shape and would probably also mean they would have to reanimate the whole thing. With the new fighters we could see animations being built different to accommodate for transformations. A lot of the cast would automatically receive updates, so even without changing anyone's moveset, it would definitely give fighters
fighters a very different feel. And it would be a ton of work for sure. Think about rebalancing this entire roster with transformations in mind. That would be kind of insane. And I think that's the perfect segue into our last point. Number six, characters. It's really hard to release a new fighting game and keep the old roster. Right now we have more than 40 characters. Who knows where we'll be when Fighters 2 gets announced. Now, if we take all these characters and make them available in the sequel, that probably means we won't get any new movesets. On the other hand, we could have brand new movesets for everyone, but what would most likely happen is the roster count would go down to under 30. Most likely... 24, which was the number it launched with. So the question becomes, should they update movesets for every character? Honestly, I don't think so. Part of the reason why Dragon Ball Fighters is so popular is because it's so easy to pick up. And that's because they took kind of a Smash Bros approach when it comes to character movesets, which is to say, yes, every character is unique in a way, but a lot of them share properties on their normal attacks. So it's easy to pick up any character and make stuff happen. No matter if you take Trunks, Goku or Gohan, you can just learn one single combo and you'll be playing these characters right away. So at most, for a fighter sequel, I think they would do a Smash Bros. style update. Do you guys remember E3 2018 when Nintendo spent their entire press conference talking about every single character in Smash and how they were gonna get updated for Ultimate? Some characters had such small changes that it was baffling that this was all they had to show for E3. But I think that's what would probably happen in a Dragon Ball Fighter sequel. You'd see changes akin to a balance patch and a bunch of supers would get new animation. That said, if there are significant system changes like the state transitions, even without changing movesets, characters will feel very different. And it would be an even bigger deal if they made transformation standard for every character. You would heavily reduce the number of Gokus and Vegetas in game, maybe you would have a Z Goku that starts on base, goes Super Saiyan and then Super Saiyan 3. When he transforms, he would change all of his supers, but the normals would kind of be a mix of the character's movesets. Super Goku would probably start at Super Saiyan God going up to Blue and Ultra Instinct, and GT would start at base going up to Super Saiyan and finally Super Saiyan 4. And Super Saiyan 4 would probably change his moveset significantly. Honestly, this kind of feels like the right move. Without having to start from scratch for every character, you'd be able to keep most of the existing roster and expand from there. That would also mean that each DLC character would be a ton more work if they did a transformation thing, but in the end, I think that's what it would take to release a sequel to such an awesome fighting game. And of course, you would see new characters too. If the anime starts up again in the meantime, you'll see Vegeta Blue evolved, you'll see Moro, maybe another new original character like Android 21, who knows? We've gone through six points in total, and I think regardless of what they change, I think there will be a new story mode. I don't know if it will be good or not, but they will do at least that much. If that comes together with a netcode update, crossplay, and cosmetics, that's more than enough to justify a new sequel, even if the system changes are minor and could probably be added with a patch. That said, if they decide to skip cosmetics, netcode, crossplay, having significant changes to system mechanics that would affect the entire roster would also justify a sequel. But I don't think they would do everything on this list. It would be awesome if they did but they uh, honestly they don't need to try this hard if they release a fighter sequel we'll all buy it regardless of what it does that said if they do release a bad sequel i doubt it will have the lifetime that fighters had so far and could potentially ruin the entire franchise don't forget about today's sponsor skillshare link down below for that free trial and i pass the question off to you what would you like to see in a fighter sequel i'd love to read your thoughts on this and as always thank you very much for watching my name is globku and i'll see you next time boy